Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Scott Nelson, and I'm the Assistant Director of Recruiting for the Cranert School of Management at Purdue University and our MBA and MS programs. This session is going to focus on our Masters of Science in Global Supply Chain Management, and I'm joined today by one of our faculty members, one of our staff members, two of our alumni, and a current student. So we're going to kick this off right away, and I'm going to uh, call on Professor Amy David, who is the Academic Director for the Global Supply Chain Management Program. And Dr. David, could you just give a quick overview of the Masters of Science in Global Supply Chain Management at Purdue, and maybe some of the highlights and strengths uh, that we offer? Sure, Scott, thanks. We have both a 12-month accelerated program that is typically done by students with a lot of work experience, or a 16-month program that is typically students uh, with a little less work experience who want a little more time to go through the program. Both are 30 credit hours, and the things that really make our program unique are the huge number of electives and options that students have here. We have a very large supply chain faculty. And so in addition to all the core classes, we have electives in some of the most trendy things in supply chain management, like sustainability, service operations, and so on. We also have an experiential learning course where students get to do a project with an actual company uh, for a grade, and that's guided by the faculty. So those are some of the things that really make our program stand out. Thank you, Dr. David. Erin um, Britton is on this call, and her role as program manager deals a lot with the admissions and evaluation for students looking at the program. Erin, could you talk a little bit about what you are seeking in a supply chain student and what might make a good applicant? Um, yeah, so we do take a holistic approach to our admissions process. Um, while that being said, I think first and foremost, we do want students to, you know, kind of meet our minimum threshold so that they are able to be successful academically. Um, beyond that, I think it's really important that students have like a certain motivation, like why do they want this? They need to be able to clearly articulate the reason that they're pursuing this program so that we can ensure that we are meeting their needs and they are able to have successful outcomes. Great. And Dr. David, you've been a faculty member overseeing our students. What, what have you seen uh, as good qualities for successful students in the program? I think that it's most a function of maturity. A lot of students come in from a lot of different backgrounds. So we're not necessarily looking for somebody that has an undergraduate degree in business. We're just looking for people who can handle the work and know when to ask for help and don't fall behind. So uh, students have been successful from all different types of backgrounds um, as long as they're motivated and mature enough to really handle their own work and take responsibility for themselves. Great. Uh, we are joined by two of our alumni uh, today. Uh, the first, uh, Shruti Singhal, a 2019 alum of the program. Shruti, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you are currently doing? Currently, I'm working as the Supply Chain Operations Manager at MedStar Health. And I would just like to give a little bit of background around my journey at MedStar because it's had, it has been an interesting one. I say this because when I interviewed with MedStar last year in February, uh, I went to India for a vacation and I couldn't come back because COVID hit, but MedStar had been so gracious to not revoke my offer. And then finally I could join in August. So, but the, but the program, the project that I was initially interviewed for was also put on hold because of COVID. So when I joined, MedStar was in a process of putting up a completely new PPE warehouse. So in my initial months at MedStar, I was just helping them to set that up. And after it got stabilized after three, four months, that's when my initial project kicked off. And so currently I am working both as a project manager of that project and as well as I'm managing a warehouse. And that project is uh, a system wide project, uh, which is around implementing an inventory management system across all of MedStar's 10 hospitals. Great, thanks Shruti. Uh Logan Avon is also on the call, who is a 2018 alum of the program. Logan, tell us a little bit about what you're doing uh, professionally. Yeah, so uh, I joined uh, SC Johnson out of undergrad, or sorry, out of grad school. And 
I've done several different roles for them over the last two and a half years. I started managing a warehouse, uh, like Shruti actually, uh, and then I actually uh, transitioned overseas to do supply planning for Thailand, Malaysia, and the Philippines. Uh, I'm currently uh, doing um, supply chain management for Grove and Walmart. Uh, Grove is a subscription box company. Check them out. Um, but uh, and I, you know, it's been great. I've been able to do a lot of different roles, and uh, I'll be heading to uh, Chicago um, here in the near future uh, to start a new role again. So, um, four four roles in two years. That's great, Logan. So, sticking with you, tell us a little bit more about why you enjoy the field of uh, global supply chain management. Um, so. Honestly, I, I enjoy it the most because you're the decision maker and I like to have the decision making rights when it comes to what my metrics are going to be. And as much as sales or marketing or anybody else tells you that they have a influence on the decision, they do have an influence on the decision. But ultimately, as a supply chain professional, I get to make the call. And uh, my personality is the way that it is because I like to be the one where the buck stops. Um, I want to be the one who gets to say, yeah, I, I did this because of these reasons. And um, when you're a supply chain professional, you get to make those decisions. Uh, when you're in other fields, you have to be more of an influential, influential, influencer. And I'm not that. That's not my background. That's not my skill set. So um, it plays well to my strengths. And I, uh, I enjoy the, the data analytics of my job. Shruti, same question to you as a professional. What, what do you enjoy about being in the supply chain field? You know, honestly, Scott, uh, being in healthcare industry right now in, uh, in the situation of crisis, that's the most fulfilling feeling, I would say. So since I have joined, I can see and I feel like I have contributed to these difficult times just by making sure that, you know, the clinical staff, the nurses, the surgeons and everything, they have sufficient supplies at their hand. I think that's what makes me content with my job. Wonderful. Uh, I'm now bringing in Sarah Young, who is a current student in the MS Global Supply Chain Management Program. And Sarah, think back to about a year ago when you applied for the degree. Why did you decide to study global supply chain management at Purdue? Absolutely. Um, so I originally uh, have a background in hospitality and tourism management. And so um, I, because of COVID, quite honestly, um, I realized that hotel operations was just not going to be realistic in my professional future, but I still wanted to um, continue my journey in operations. I really enjoyed that aspect in hotels, but I wanted to get um, a broader horizon and just widen, widen my scope in terms of that. So I decided to uh, apply for the supply chain program and um, I got in. So um, that's kind of how I started my journey with the supply chain program. And, and with the classes you've taken so far, uh, what has been enjoyable or impactful or interesting? Uh, sure. Uh, I think one of the really thing, the, the, one of the things I really enjoy is that the professors really teach theory, but also make sure that we understand it in practice. So in terms of theory, there are the lectures, there are the case studies, but there are also group projects where um, we as students really try to understand the operation, uh, work on it together, and uh, maybe even collaborate with a business and uh, help see it through. Another thing that I think really helps is that uh, Purdue and its courses um, really make sure it helps the students after their graduation in, and into the professional life. Um, for example, with uh, Professor Amy David's course, uh, I was able to really get into uh, the knowledge of SAP Fiori and uh, for my incoming summer internship with uh, Stryker, uh, they actually will be implementing that software into their database um, like this year. So I will be able to really be comfortably uh, able to use this and be knowledgeable in this. So I won't be kind of diving in deep too much. <laughs> very, very good. Um, not only alongside the classwork, or the, yeah, the, yeah the, the schoolwork and the classes that we teach uh, in supply chain management, we also do a lot of experiential learning and experiential learning projects. Shruti, when you were a student here, you engaged in one of those experiential learning projects. Could you tell us a little bit uh, about that? 
Yes, yeah, sure. So for somebody like me who didn't have a background or experience in supply chain, my ELI project was super, super important and critical for my understanding around supply chain. Uh, we did our project with a company called Merisant, which was based in Chicago. They are into artificial sweeteners business. And our project was to really understand their whole SNOP process, find the gaps and provide them recommendations. So th through that whole process, we were, we were talking with their supply chain analysts, we were talking to their sourcing director, their manufacturing facility, the salesperson and everybody else involved in the whole supply chain process. So that gave us a lot of perspective around how supply chain works in the industry, what we can expect when we start working and also just clear a lot of basics around supply chain. So that really helped. Wonderful. Um, you know, going back to the field of supply chain itself, we've been uh, addressing and, and talking about COVID-19 a few times here. But Dr. David, uh, just for anyone who's considering the field of supply chain right now, what are your thoughts on, on the future and what might be a, a hot thing to pursue for any individual? Sure. I think that there are a lot of opportunities in supply chain, and there are a lot of opportunities to make a name for yourself in an organization very quickly. And the reason for that is that supply chain really touches every part of the business. I actually worked in a couple of supply chain roles before returning to Cranert, uh, before returning to school and then coming to Cranert. And I got to know the financial people, I got to know the manufacturing people, the sales people. You are talking to every single department in the organization and you really have the big picture, um, the big picture view of everything going on in the organization. In 2020 with COVID, the word supply chain suddenly became a household phrase. <laughs> so now there are a lot of people uh, looking to hire for supply chain and companies really trying to beef up supply chain as a specific discipline and looking for specific experts in uh, supply chain areas um, to uh, uh, manage their supply chain going forward and try and prevent some of the things we saw uh, this year with shortages on things that really had nothing to do with COVID or medical supplies, uh, shortages on certain types of groceries or toilet paper or something like that. So everyone's really recognizing just how fragile supply chains could be and how you need expertise to, to really run them correctly. Very good. And, and Logan, uh, you know, having been out in the field now, post masters for a few years, what would you say to an individual who is looking to pursue supply chain as a career? I think uh, one of the one of the most critical things is just understanding um, where you where you play, uh, where you play in the business. Uh, and, and that, I think, is it's you're managing up and down and it's, it's really the, the center spot of the organization. Um, and I think there's a lot of companies that need a lot of help in this area. Uh, so, you know, I think if you're considering coming to the supply chain field, I think there is a definite hole in the market for people that have, uh, this unique set of skills. Uh, I think that, I think that, it's not a glory position. So if that's what you're looking for, I don't think this might be the right fit for you, but I do think that uh, there is a lot of opportunity and there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of churn in these spots, right? Cause there's just not, there's not enough knowledge to be able to effectively do their jobs. So then people are spending, you know, a lot of time in the workplace working on, you know, things that are, they're not efficient at because they don't under, they don't have the skill set behind it, right? So you can stand out easily uh, with a background and a degree that as long as you put in the time and understand the ins and outs of it, um, I think you have a real good opportunity to stand out. Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Logan. Um, Shruti, going back to you, um, you know, I, I work with a lot of students. Uh, my role with the university, if I didn't explain already, is to work with prospective students who are considering uh, graduate school at Purdue. And so I get questions all the time about an applicant's uh, background. And Shruti, I wanted you to touch a little bit on your experience, particularly from an international perspective. What, what advice would you give to an, a, a student outside the United States wishing to come to study to, in the United States and have success both on campus and beyond uh, in their career? 
So for international students, if somebody is planning to come to the US for their master's, be at Purdue or at any other school, I would first say that come with an open mind and an open attitude and try to embrace and gain a holistic experience of your school here because the cultures are different. The way things work here are very different. There are people to help you out, your career coaches, your professors, program coordinators, everybody else that you meet here, everybody is willing to help you. But you have to come out of your comfort zone. You don't have to hesitate to ask for help. Um, secondly, I would say a lot of people are very scared about the job search process, right? Uh, so for job search specifically, I would say first, trust in your abilities, take help of your career coaches and professors, and also try to build your own story and process around job search. Listen to people, get inspired, listen to their stories, but use your own mind and strengths to really approach that process and you will get a job. You, you, you will get a great job. Thank you, Shruti. Um, Sarah, similar question on a different front. A lot of prospective students ask me, I don't have a background in supply chain. Uh, is it is it a good thing for me to come into this program? Will I be successful? You mentioned earlier you came from hospitality tourism management. Tell us a little bit about the success you have had not coming from a business school background. Um, absolutely. Um, to be quite honest, it was pretty difficult uh, for the first uh, semester or first uh, couple of classes in a sense. Um, the adjustment was definitely in a sense uh, a bit difficult, whether it for example, in the hospitality industry, most of my classes were, um, there are a lot of females in my classroom, quite honestly. And then in the supply chain classroom, uh, it's a little bit more male dominated, but I was able to kind of find my own organizations in a sense that I joined GWIP, which is the Graduate Woman in Business Club. I joined KGSA, which is the Krenner Graduate Student Association group. And I was really able to kind of find my own community um, with my supply chain students, but also with students in other programs. Uh, in terms of academics, uh, supply chain is definitely different from my hospitality coursework, but um, I think Purdue and the program does a really great job in allowing students to get connected with tutors, um, get connected with alumni that want to help their students, and also um, just sincere professors that want to see their students grow and uh, achieve whatever they want into their professional uh, future. Great. Um, moving along, I'd like to talk a little bit about life on campus at Purdue and in the community of West Lafayette. Logan and Sarah, you both did not only your master's here, but your undergraduate here. Logan, can you talk about just life uh, as a Purdue student and an individual living uh, an individual living in West Lafayette, Indiana? Yeah, I you know as a as a prospective grad student, I think the the biggest thing to understand is that there's also you know between ten and twenty other kids or people, I guess not kids, um, that are going into the master's program with you that also don't know anybody who are going to be there for the first time, who don't have a group of people to hang out with, who don't know anything about what you're doing. Um, you know, some of us have a slight advantage uh, from coming back to school there, but to be honest with you, um, I was there four years apart, so um, I didn't know anybody. Like, yeah, I knew the city, but I didn't know anybody that was living there, so um, you know, I think, uh, honestly, the, the people that uh, I met in through the program and uh, the, you know, the friendships that I cultivated through the program were great. Several of them were in my wedding, actually. Um, so it's just, uh, it, it's just what you make of it, right? Uh, the, the gym is incredible. I spent a lot of time in the gym, uh, and I spent a lot of time uh, reading in, uh, on campus, and that, that was kind of it, right? So it's just what you make of it. It's the people you hang out with. Um, the the bar scene is pretty great there too if you like uh, if you like that kind of thing and uh, so there's a lot going on the Purdue uh, athletics is getting better uh, basketball was a good year this year uh, football we'll see next year hopefully it's better uh, but uh, it's uh, there's a lot going on um, there is something to do all the time and uh, again it's it's how engaged do you want to be as an individual it's up to you. And Sarah, similarly, you went directly from your bachelor's into your master's. So you've been in West Lafayette for several years now. What, what is life like uh, for you here? 
Um, life has been really good. Uh, the community at Purdue is just really nice, really welcoming. And I think no matter whatever program you are, whatever area in your life you're in, you'll always find a community to um, be with, uh, just friends to hang out with. Um, kind of like what Logan said, there are a lot of fun places to hang out at Purdue. My personal favorite is just the various fun uh, fountains that Purdue has. It's, it's really nice, especially on a nice day. Um, of course, all of the basketball games, they're my favorite. And then, um, yeah, if, if, a, if it's like a nice Thursday or Friday, um, going down to Harry's is always just a, kind of a fun treat uh, to treat yourself after some coursework. <laughs> Balance is good, that's for sure. Aaron, Aaron, you work with our students, not only on the admission side, but then once they arrive here, what do you encourage your students to do while here outside of their academics? Um, yeah, so my biggest advice to incoming students is just to be ready to engage. Um, I don't know what that looks like for their path, but just to be open to engage in opportunities that really speak to them. Um, so kind of to you know add on to what Logan and Sarah said, Craner itself offers a lot of activities and student organizations. Um, sorry, calendar update. And, um, but the university as a whole offers a whole lot of student organizations and activities. So um, I just think if, if you have one interest that you might think is, an outlier, you're gonna find it here on campus um, and also find people to meet that share your same interests. Um, I think that participating outside of the classroom is really important because I think so much learning actually happens outside of the classroom. And I think that's something that COVID has really taught us this past year is that, um, you know, that is really fundamental to the student development and experience here. Um, another great way that I don't think students, um, incoming students, unless they were Craner undergrads, really know um, to take advantage of are case competitions. Um, we've had several students that have been very successful. So it's, it's great for students to have that, you know, experience, business experience, but I also think it's a great way for students to network. Um, build their professional network, those same companies will be sponsoring, they will be judges, you will get likes on your LinkedIn profile. So I think until students actually engage in that and experience that, they don't really know how, um, how that can help them in the long run. But obviously, I think fundamental, exactly what Logan said, is build your cohort. These are people that you will know for the rest of your life. Um, and when you're looking for that next job, you will, you know, say, hey, how, how, what's it look like at, at your company? Um, how are you doing? So I think that's really important um, to their time here. So really just going back to be ready to engage and whatever that looks like for you, that's exactly what you'll find. Well said, Erin. Fantastic. So we're about ready to wrap this up. And I would like to close again with, with Dr. Amy David. Uh, Dr. David, someone considering a master's degree in supply chain, you know, why Purdue? Why the Craner School of Management? What, what is, what makes us special and strong at what we do? Sure. I think that one of the strengths of our program is, again, a very large and very well-known, internationally well-known faculty. But I also think that a lot of what makes it a great place to do your degree is how personalized the experience is. Um, we have a lot of staff, we have a lot of faculty, um, we have older students, everybody's invested in your success here. And I know every one of the students in the program and we can have, a, and so does Aaron, and we can have chats about your career goals or um, co-curricular activities or what courses you should take to meet specific, uh, specific goals. And um, I think that we really have a strong cohort feel and students really get to know one another and get to know all the faculty and staff who are here for them. Wonderful. Well, that will wrap up this session. Uh, thank you uh, all of you for, for your time in recording this. Uh, I think your insights are very uh, valuable. 
Um, so again, my name is Scott Nelson, and my role with the School of Management is to speak to prospective students, provide information for them, and answer their questions. Uh, but in regards to the Masters of Science in Global Supply Chain Management, we offer both a fall intake and a spring intake. Uh, and as of 2021, we also offer both uh, in-residence and an online uh, degree with a fall and a spring intake. Uh, for more information, the quickest way is to visit our website, which is above my shoulder right here, um, cranert.purdue.edu slash masters. And you're always welcome to contact me directly with questions. You can find me on the website, Scott Nelson. My email is srnelson at purdue.edu. Thank you for your interest in the Craner School of Management and the Global Supply Chain Management Program specifically. And uh, we hope to uh, see you apply soon. Thanks folks.